this is what becoming the magnetic woman in your life does for you. It allows you to not like string yourself along into something that's just kind of like half ass or 50% there or even 90% there. It allows you to stand for what it is that you actually want, need, desire. And for you, it allows you to be a stand for what you're actually calling in. Because when you say no to something that is 90% right for you, you leave space for the 100%. We're back, baby, with a brand new season of the It's Fucking Spiritual podcast. Join us each week as we have unfiltered conversations about how to transform your life. Our mission is to usher in a new era of spirituality where you don't have to be all love and light to live a life of alignment. Here, we honor all of it, the profound and the profane, the magic and the messy, and all things that make you human. So let's discuss the truth behind transformation and be unapologetic in our evolution. From manifestation to money, embodiment to energy, and all taboo topics, nothing is going to be off limits. Are you ready to live a life that feels just as good as it looks? Let's get fucking spiritual. Hello, my loves. Welcome back to another episode of the It's Fucking Spiritual podcast. Today, we're back with another solo episode. We love this. <laughs> and uh, I'm sitting here actually more close up to the camera because I'm trying to figure out a way to make this feel more personal, like we're hanging out, kind of like old times. And so I hope you can feel me <laughs> a little bit more on the screen or through the screen on this episode. And today I'm going to be talking about a topic that I'm really excited about and I feel like hopefully you will be too. This has been really alive for me in my life. As you all know, I have been on a journey of tapping into my feminine and becoming more magnetic and leading through my desire and becoming softer yet also firmer in my boundaries. And I think all of those qualities just describe a woman who is magnetic. And I think that is what we all desire in our life, right? Is to become a woman who magnetizes her desires, magnetizes what it is that she wants. And I've always talked about that to a degree, right? I've always talked about manifesting and creating what it is that you want in your life. But I feel like there is now a 2.0 version of this where the magnetic woman is a woman who really carries herself with grace and poise and ease. And we have a visitor. <laughs> and this little guy wants to be with us too, buddy. This is Oliver, <laughs> for anyone who doesn't know my dog. And yeah, the magnetic woman is a woman who holds herself to a very high standard and holds um, who she allows in her life to a high standard and how she operates and how she moves throughout the world. And so I wanted to give you a few um, tips about becoming the magnetic woman in your life. This is something that I am actively doing. But before I do, I want to talk about my story to becoming more magnetic and holding myself in a different way. And you guys... I used to be, buddy, we stop licking. Thank you. Thank you. You can join us, but please don't lick. <laughs> um, I used to be the cool girl. We all know it. The girl that is fun and she doesn't like need anything. And this isn't just in dating. This was also in business. And I used to be like kind of a hot mess. And I, you know, I would just be um, sure, like you, you don't have to text me back, like whatever, right? Like I don't have any needs. I don't have anything. Um, like, like I'm just chill. I'm just chill. I'm fun. And I prided myself on being the fun, cool, easy girl. And I think somewhere subconsciously, I thought it would make me more loved, more desirable, more liked. And I didn't realize that I was actually creating the exact opposite effect for myself by being the cool girl. Because I was, um, yeah, like not, not enforcing boundaries, didn't even know what my boundaries were. I was such a people pleaser. I was so worried that, um, you know, I would seem like a bitch or that I would seem mean or that I would, 
um, be not liked or someone would leave me if I wasn't just cool and accommodating and nice and fun. <laughs> and it was the same thing in my business in the early years. I was like, oh yeah, like that's totally fine. And I would just like, you know, oh, sure. We can to I would, like bend over backwards to accommodate different rates and accommodate different things. And um, I was totally operating like the cool girl. And it didn't, it ended up leaving me feeling exhausted, depleted, resentful, not having good relationships in my life, not having a solid community around me in my life that were holding me to a standard because no one can hold you to a standard that you're not holding yourself. And if you aren't holding yourself to a standard, the people around you aren't holding themselves to a standard either, right? Because birds of a, fe of a feather tend to flock together. And when I moved to Austin, I, this was almost two years ago now, I suddenly shifted who I was hanging out around. And this is another thing, you guys. You can't be what you can't see. And so if everyone around you is, let's say, the cool girl, right? Or if everyone around you has a certain level of consciousness or frequency or operates a certain way, it's really challenging to outgrow that, right? But when you see a different way of operating, a different way of being, when you see a different possibility for yourself, you can begin to embody it. You can be, when you're around it, it like naturally starts to seep into who you are. So when I moved to Austin and I suddenly was around people that had much bigger businesses, that had really deep, incredible partnerships and relationships, they had a very high standard for who they were. It immediately jolted me into, oh, it's time for me to up-level. It's time for me to rise. It's time for me to step into this next level version of myself, which at the time I didn't even know existed because I had already changed so much in my life that I didn't actually realize that I had massively um, shifted and changed and transformed. And if you see me looking over here, guys, <laughs> I have some notes. And yeah, when I moved to Austin and I saw a new possibility for myself and I saw how the women there were carrying themselves, it completely catapulted me into new reality. And these last two years, all of the old ways of being for me have shed and have changed. And I've really come into a new level of embodiment, which is nearly the exact opposite of how I used to carry myself, how I used to speak and who I used to be. So I want to speak this into you as well, that if you notice that you are putting up with dating uh, in relationships that aren't good for you, or you keep attracting the same type of guy, or if you can't seem to get your business past a certain level, either you can't get it off the ground or you can't seem to get it past, um, like you're stuck at a plateau or you don't have good community around you, you don't feel like your community around you is up leveling. I'm going to give you some tips on becoming the magnetic woman in your own life and start to embody these. And I'm also gonna give you a little bit of the how-to as well um, so that you can start to actually practice being this, practice this frequency and feel it here from me on the podcast. So the magnetic woman, what does she do? What is she like? How does she be in the world? How does she date? How does she run her business? The magnetic woman is not overly accommodating. If you feel deeply connected to this episode, if you are ready to step into the expanded version of you, if you are ready to learn how to reparent your inner child and repattern the ways that you show up in the world, I'm so excited to officially announce and invite you to my upcoming in-person retreat in Austin, Texas, in August, August 22nd to 26th, there are two different style tickets with two very different price points. So I really tried to cater to everyone to make it accessible for you to come. Check it out in the show notes. We have a VIP that comes, stays in the house, um, has all meals included. We're all staying together. And then there's also an immersion style where you come to the location every single day. And I cannot wait to be in person with all of you to get to heal together. There's so much that you can do and collapse time when you are held in sisterhood 
for three to four days and allow yourself the space and time to really go into your um, inner wounding, go into your blocks, go into the things that are holding you back and learn to actually somatically repattern them in your nervous system. That is what we are going to be doing at this retreat so that you can plug back into the true you of who you really are and leave as the expanded woman that you know that you were meant to be. And it's called the Expanded Women Retreat. I didn't say that. <laughs> but anyway, if you are feeling called to join us, tickets officially went live. So go check that out in the show notes. And hopefully I will get to meet you and give you a huge hug in August. I have so many boundaries now. <laughs> I have so many needs. And I can also meet those needs. And I have a high standard for myself. And I have a high standard for the people who are around me. The magnetic woman owns her desires. She says what she needs. She says what she wants. So she's not just like, you know, kind of getting by with whatever people are like willing to give her. I'll give you an example from my own life. Bless this man. We will not use his name. But recently <laughs> I went on a date and it was a first date. And I'm very, very clear on what I want in a man. And I personally desire a masculine man who wants to provide, who's very um, protective, who leads. And it doesn't mean it's not because I want to follow, but it's because I want to be able to relax in the presence of a masculine man. I want a man who is direct, who is communicative, who texts me when he says he's going to text me, who plans dates, who shows up for me on time. Um, and who I'm never guessing, right? The nervous system, like the feminine nervous system can't relax when she doesn't know where she's being led. So if you are constantly putting up with the men that are like not really texting you and like saying they're gonna text and then they don't, or, um, you know, saying like, oh, like, let's go with the flow. Like, yeah, I'll text you soon. No, no, okay? Like, we're not doing that. I literally will never do that ever again. I want Hey, Friday at 7 p.m., I'm picking you up. Here's where we're going. Um, does that sound good to you? <laughs> like, I want direct, clear communication because the feminine can only relax and feel safe and desired when she has a frame to understand what is happening. So, bless this man, I go on a first date, right? And for me, it's important for me that the man pays. That is just something that is a big deal for me. Might not be a big deal for you, but that's just something that I desire. And we go out just for a quick coffee date and he had arrived before me. And I, ha like I happened to, he, he got his coffee first, right? And so when I get there, he's like, oh, do you want to get a coffee? I'm like, yeah, that would be great. And he walks up with me to the counter and then I order. And when it comes time to pay, he just kind of looks down and I'm like, okay. So I pay for this coffee, right? Other than this, great date, sweet. There was a few things that I was like, mm, not sure if we're on, fully on the same page, but great, great man, right? And he had kind of left it up to me, like, why don't you text me? Like, you know, what you're doing this weekend and like, maybe I can come. And it just kind of put me in the masculine frame of me having to lead, me having to be the person that's going to text. And I left that date and inside I just felt, ugh, like, I don't know, <laughs> right? Like something feels off. Something in my intuition is like, this isn't how I want to feel. Um, I want to be courted, right? I want to be pursued. And that wasn't the dynamic that was unfolding here. And some might call this high maintenance. And I myself would have called this high maintenance a few years ago, but I'm really in the space of practicing owning my desires, owning my needs, being very communicative about that and vulnerable. So that's the next thing is an, a magnetic woman knows what she wants and she leads with, with her vulnerability. She leads with her feelings and she expresses those. So that night I actually texted the man with help from my girlfriends, <laughs> of course. And I said, you know, I so enjoyed our date. And I also noticed that, um, you know, something came up for me when, when you didn't pay for my coffee. 
And for me, I'm really looking for a man to provide and for a man to want to lead. And I'm creating a story that you don't want to lead. So I would love some clarity around that. Oh my gosh, when I sent this text, I still was like, oh, like that was an edge for me, right? Like, I don't know if you're listening to this. Notice if an edge comes up for you. And also notice if you have judgments, right? Notice if you have judgments of me being too high maintenance. Notice if you have judgments around like, oh my God, I would never say that to a guy. Like after a first date, like, oh my, notice if you go there. Is I used to go there, but this is what a magnetic woman does. And here's what happened next. He actually called me and we had this beautiful conversation and he was like, wow, oh my gosh, like, thank you so much. Like, that's actually so attractive that you would share with me. Because here's the thing, men, masculine men actually want you to share your feelings and be vulnerable. And the ones that don't, maybe look at if that's right for you. And he said, thank you so much for sharing this with me. And then it actually ended up coming out that he said, you know, I'm because of the nature of like where I'm at in my, you know, what I want in my life and all of these things. He said, I'm actually looking for a relationship that's just fully 50, 50, 100% of the time. And I said, okay, great. We're not a match, but I love that we had this conversation and he and I actually are great friends now. <laughs> like he literally just came to my birthday party um, and is a wonderful, wonderful person. But here's why this is important right? Because old me, old me who was the cool girl, old me who was accommodating, old me who was like, I, you know, I, I'll take, like, take what I can get. And like, oh, like, let's just give him the benefit of the doubt. Like, you know, uh, like, I'm sure it's fine. You know, maybe, maybe like that was just kind of a fluke. No, no. Old me would have done that, probably would have dated the guy for a couple months, and then it would have come out and it would have been a bigger thing. And it would have been just like, you know, and me now, owning my desires, sharing them vulnerably, sharing how I feel, not projecting, not being angry, not saying like, you're doing this, right? Really owning from a place of responsible, nonviolent communication, if anybody knows that. Um, owning my feelings, owning and sharing the story that I'm creating because of that and asking for clarity. And through that, gained clarity that this person wouldn't be a match for me in dating. I get to hold my um, desire true. I get to respect this man and what's right for him. And now we have a great relationship, a friendship, right? And so this is what becoming the magnetic woman in your life does for you. It allows you to not like string yourself along into something that's just kind of like half-ass or 50% there or even 90% there. It allows you to stand for what it is that you actually want need, desire, and for you, it allows you to be a stand for what you're actually calling in. Because when you say no to something that is 90% right for you, you leave space for the 100%. Because I promise you, if you ignore the 10%, then it will come out later and it will be bigger and it will be something that, you know, will typically, um, cause you more issues <laughs> than if you were to have just gone with your gut feeling and followed it in the first place. So a magnetic woman is high maintenance because she maintains herself to a high standard. She owns what she wants. She's unapologetic. She's grounded in herself. She knows her needs, her desires, her boundaries. And she holds them. She also is the gatekeeper to her energy. She's the gatekeeper to her body. And she's the gatekeeper to letting people into her field, right? Into her aura, into her being. I used to be the fun girl. I used to be the girl that was like, oh, sure. Like, oh, I'm fun. I'm sexual. I'm like all these things, right? And I was actually letting people's energy into my field, into my body that I wasn't, um, that wasn't actually good for me. And so when you can hold yourself to such a standard, when you can have a clean energy, when you can say like, this is what I'm here for. And this is what I'm allowing into my life. This is what I'm not allowing into my life. That becomes so magnetic because now your field, your body, your being isn't being muddied by other people's energy that don't deserve to be there. You're not high maintenance. You're not too much. 
You don't need to people please. And we get to understand where those things come from. Briefly interrupting this podcast episode to invite you to join me in my upcoming free three-day nervous system regulation workshop called Regulate this upcoming July 16th to 18th. If you are someone who is ready to feel let up and alive and grounded and free in your body, it starts by learning how to regulate your nervous system. If you've been listening to this podcast or any of the other episodes and thinking to yourself, this is me, I promise you the foundation for every single thing that you want in your life is learning how to get out of your head, into your body, and learning how to regulate your emotions so that you can show up as a fully expanded version of yourself. So I invite you to join us this upcoming July 16th to 18th for Regulate. Look in the show notes and all of the info will be there for you to join. Now back to the episode. So this is part two of how to become the magnetic woman. I'm gonna look at my notes again. You guys, I'm actually planning out podcasts a little bit more. Don't we love that for me? Um, yeah, so how do you actually become the magnetic woman? A lot of content on the internet is going to tell you, just embody it, like just become it. Like imagine the woman that you wanna become and then become her. <laughs> okay, this doesn't really work. It does work for some people that have absolutely no trauma, which is mainly not many people. <laughs> so that's a great surface level thing to tell you. And it can work a little bit of the time when there is a circumstance that doesn't hold charge. Meaning if it doesn't hit on your inner wounding, your inner vulnerabilities, it's really easy to just be like, act like that woman, <laughs> right? Act like the woman that you want to become. And People that say this aren't wrong. I used to say this at the beginning of my journey too. Because, and I would try to do that. And then inevitably I'd be like, okay, why are these like same things still coming up for me in relationships? Like I'm trying to manifest, I'm trying to manifest, I'm trying to act as if, and it, and it would work for me 10% of the time. And then inevitably a trigger comes up or something comes up in your life that hits on the wounded inner child part of you. And the second that your nervous system doesn't feel, feel safe, you're gonna fall back into the same patterns that are habitual for you every time. So you're gonna fall back into the people pleaser. You're gonna fall back into the part of you that fawns. You're gonna fall back into the part of you that controls and freaks out, right? Until you learn how to actually work with this. It is a little bit of a longer process, but it is a process that actually will change you for the rest of your life and isn't putting a Band-Aid on something. And I will say this again. I will say this till I'm blue in the face. I will say this for the rest of my life. The only way to heal this, the only way to become truly magnetic from the inside out where it's not a facade, where it's not a mask, you have to go in and learn how to feel your feelings, process your feelings. You have to learn how to expand your capacity to feel what's there or what is there will own you because it will come out sideways when you get triggered. So magnetic women, they can feel their feelings. They can own their feelings. They can then communicate their feelings once they've processed them. And they can stand firm in who they are. They stand firm in, they stand firm in being able to communicate their feelings and, and back themselves in that. Magnetic women back themselves. Not like second guessing, oh, maybe I shouldn't have done that. Oh, maybe I shouldn't have said that. Oh, I don't know. They trust their intuition, they trust their gut, and they own it. And the only way to actually get all of the muck away, so if you're sitting here and like, Rachel, but like, how do I actually, like, I always second guess myself. I notice that I self-doubt, like, how do I actually begin to own my intuition and just like back myself in that? I'll tell you, I'll tell you. You have to learn how to regulate your nervous system first. Have to learn how to regulate your nervous system I'm doing a three-day free event called Regulate on regulating your nervous system toward the end of July. Go to the show notes and sign up for it. That's step one. Because if you are constantly, if you're going on dates or say if you're in a relationship or you're running a business, this all goes for business as well. 
or may, even in like your corporate job, right? If people are able to fully derail you and take you out and like your emotions are all over the place, means that you're not regulated, not regulated. And when you're not regulated, your inner child parts are just simply flaring up and the protective mechanisms come online. So meaning you get triggered. And so say like your boss at your job, right, is like kind of a bully to you or something. And you are constantly people pleasing and fawning on like, or you're in your relationship, same thing. Like you notice like, oh, sure. Like, I don't know. Like, where do you want to go for dinner? Like, oh, I don't know. Because you like, just want like what they want so that you can like make them. <laughs> make them happy, right? Um, or they do something that really bothers you and you don't say anything. Or you do they do something that bothers you and you blow up on them, you nag them, you're like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Like, why don't you just like be like this? Like why, right? And then it creates a disconnection. It's because parts of you are actually online and not coming from your whole worthy, authentic, sovereign self. Instead, your people pleaser is coming online. That's a protective part of you. Or your controller is coming online that wants to fight, right? That means that your nervous system is dysregulated and that it's, you're in a state of fight, flight, or freeze. You have to learn how to actually regulate your nervous system. One of the ways that you can do that easily is just through the breath and making space. So between your reaction and your response, before you respond, breathe and create space. And the more you learn how to regulate your nervous system, the more expanded capacity your body will have to hold sensation. Feelings are sensation. So step two, you feel what you haven't processed. You feel what you haven't processed. And for me, that has looked like being in really safe spaces that allow me to do embodiment work, allow me to literally physically process the feelings that are keeping me stuck. And I know that that can sound kind of scary if you've never done it or like, oh my God, there's so many feelings under there. Like I'm really scared of what I'm going to find. I promise you, your body doesn't give you anything that you can't handle. And as you learn how to feel what you haven't processed, people have a fear that if they start feeling, they're going to be stuck there forever. And it's actually the opposite because what you don't feel ends up controlling you because it lives underneath the surface and then it comes out sideways. It comes out sideways in your relationships. It comes out sideways at work, it comes out sideways in the way that you build or don't build your dreams and your business and show up and let yourself be seen. And so you have to feel what you haven't allowed yourself to feel. And then you become your own parent. You begin to reparent yourself. You begin to give yourself love. You begin to give yourself compassion. You begin to give yourself the things that you haven't given yourself before. And if this process sounds familiar to you, it's because it is. It's because I teach it inside of my expand program. It's a six part process. And we're going to be running an expand program again at the end of the summer. So come to regulate the free three day event and we'll be running expand after that. So if you want to get a little bit more of a taste of what expand is like, you can come to regulate the, the three-day event. Um, and yeah, you become your own parent. You begin to reparent the parts of you that didn't feel safe. And when you begin to do this, and all of this is a dance, right? It's not like step one, regulate your nervous system. Step two, now you feel. Step three, now you parent. This is, I, I teach them this way because it's the only way that our linear logical brain can make sense of it. But once you have all the steps, it's a full dance. It's a full dance of some days you're going to just need to feel, right? And, and some days you're going to be doing a lot of reparenting. But, you know, and, and it's, not a, it's not a step one, step two, step three, and you'll never have to do it again. These are tools for a lifetime. But here's the thing. A magnetic woman trusts herself. She trusts the fact that she can hold herself in any emotion and any feeling. And this is the steps to be able to hold yourself in that. Because you can't share with someone else your needs, your desires, and your boundaries if you don't trust yourself to hold yourself in the feelings that may come up for you when you share those. You might not even be connected to your needs, desires, feelings, boundaries. 
if you haven't learned how to get out of your own way with the muck and the protector parts and the people pleaser and the, the right, like you haven't even accessed what's underneath there. So this is the key. This is the way for you to actually begin to heal from the inside out and not just embody the, your highest self, embody a magnetic woman. It's like the second that you get triggered in a relationship, all of that's going out the window and you're going back to people pleasing, fawning, fighting, controlling, nagging, whatever the things are that you typically do because your nervous system won't have felt safe. And so you need to begin to create safety in your body first yourself so that then you can show up differently in relationship. So, <sighs> guys, I'm looking at my notes again. Okay, so once you do this process, once you are able to actually feel and process your emotions, then and only then can you begin to look at the embodiment of the people around you um, and or look at the embodiment of like even getting this podcast, right? Like even listening to me right now, like this is a, an embodiment that you're able to listen to and get this like frequency of only then can you begin to start to practice it. Sharing your desires, sharing your boundaries, being vulnerable, sharing what works for you, what doesn't work for you, holding yourself true to that, backing yourself. Then that becomes an active practice. But only once you've done the nervous system, once you hold yourself in the nervous system regulation and once you actually begin to like love and give your, the parts of you that are trying to control and protect love and compassion, that has to come first before you just like embody it. And then the second part is you embody it. You embody it. This is so important to me. And it has been such an active practice for me. And it's been really beautiful to witness myself shift and change and grow and become. And it really is so important that you get out of the current um, surroundings that you're in. If Say if you have women around you or people around you that don't embody these things. It's so important. It's so beautiful that you're listening to this podcast, that you listen to other podcasts, that you begin to surround yourself even if it's just on the internet, with people that embody this frequency because it actually shows your subconscious mind a different possibility and way of being and allows you to reorient the way that you show up, reorient your beliefs, right, around how you show up. And then when you're doing that coupled with regulating your nervous system, holding yourself, feeling your feelings, and you also now have this new example of possibility of how you can show up and what you can embody in the world, you are literally unstoppable. And when you actually have people around you that can hold you to this standard, who can um, not only embody it themselves, but reflect back to you your own light, your own, um, your own deservingness, because you're so deserving. You're so deserving of what you desire. You're so deserving of having an amazing relationship. You're so deserving of having all of the things that you want in this life. And the more that you can surround yourself with people that will be able to mirror that and hold that vision for you back to you, the faster you will change. I know that's certainly so true in my life. I have done this work for, gosh, six years now. And the first five years of me doing this work, I changed drastically. Don't get me wrong. I changed so drastically and I did a lot of work on myself. And yet the last year of my life living in Austin and being surrounded by community all day, <laughs> not meaning I'm with them all day, but like my in-person community, my entire friend group here, they are walking embodiments of this. And it has catapulted me to an, an entirely new world, an entirely new embodiment, a new way of being. And it's so exciting for me to get to share that with you on here and to pay that forward and to pass that along. But I didn't always have that. 
I didn't always have that. I typically, like probably many of you listening to this, don't have that in your hometowns, don't have people around you that are holding you to the standard, that are holding you in your magnetism, that are speaking light into you and love into you and possibility into you. And so you start with podcasts. I started with podcasts six years ago, laying in bed after my accident. I feel like I'm going to do another My Story episode because a lot of you are new here. Um, so if you don't know my story, I was laying in bed with a cast on my leg, having just shattered my knee. And that's when I found self-development. And my first entrance into expanding my mind in this world was podcasts, just like this one. And after that, it was retreats and events and going in person. So when I couldn't be in person all the time with people right in where I lived, I would fly out and go to these events and they would massively expand my consciousness because once you can see it, you can see a new possibility and it shows your subconscious mind that it's actually possible for you. And then of course there's the work to actually do it, but it expands so much your possibility. And that's why I've dedicated my life to creating this podcast and paying this forward for all that I've learned and also creating spaces in person as well. We have an upcoming retreat in Austin in August, which is in the show notes. We have some spots left for that. So if you are desiring to join us and to do this work, to do a lot of this embodiment work. So everything I talk about on the podcast, everything I talk about here is um, beautiful. It's a beautiful step one, but there's something incredible that happens when you are able to actually take yourself out of your environment for three to four days and go into a space where everyone is speaking the same language. Everyone is holding you in your um, highest vision and you can go deep into doing this embodiment work to learning how to feel. I'm going to be holding and taking a small group of women through this entire process over a four-day period. And if you are feeling called to go really deep in this work, to become the magnetic woman that you know that you were born to be, that you naturally are, um, I invite you to come join us for the retreat in August. And with that, um, yeah, I'm just so honored to be able to, to share this work. And I'm such a stand for you standing for what you want, for you standing for your desires, for you sharing your needs, and for you saying and owning um, what it is that you want fully, unapologetically, and being in your fullest expression and deeply owning that. So I am standing for you to become the most magnetic woman that you know. And I'm standing for that for all of us. So yeah, come join us for all the things, free event, regulate, um, expand the program, or come join us for the retreat in person in August in Austin. And DM me on Instagram at Rachel Gibbler if you have any questions or you want to talk it through and see if it's a fit for you. Okay, I love you and I will see you in the next episode. Thank you for listening to the It's Fucking Spiritual podcast. I am so glad that you're here. And if this episode resonated with you, I invite you to share this with a friend that you feel needs to hear it. And if you are really feeling the love and support for this show, this podcast thrives off of your listens and your reviews. So I would love if you could leave us an honest review. We would love to hear your feedback, your thoughts, your questions. And it helps us get this podcast in the hands of more people and would mean so much to me to receive your support. So thank you.